Our next speaker is Jay Isaac, and he is currently the head um, of strategy and offset at Saab Grintec Defense. Um, so Jay holds a, a engineering a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Durban Westville, as well as an MSc and an MBA from the then University of Natal, who is now the University of KZN. And Jay is just going to speak to us about, um, from a local perspective, what it is to access global aerospace supply chains um, and, and hopefully <coughs> cooperate with organizations such as Airbus Defense Space. Jay, thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as was mentioned, we are looking at it from a local perspective. Uh, my talk will be divided into two parts. Uh, I'm aware that all of you may not know what Saab Green Tech Defense does in South Africa, so I'll speak a little bit about that. Thereafter, I will actually proceed uh, to speak about how we've actually managed to uh, leverage uh, global supply chains from South Africa and focus on exports. Uh, just brief history about the formation of uh, Saab Green Tech Defense. Uh, the Global Saab was founded in 1937 and uh, went on to acquire a number of those companies that you see on the screen. In 2005, um, they acquired uh, uh, Grimtech, as you see there, and we have um, proceeded as a uh, autonomous company uh, affiliated in South Africa uh, to continue the success story of uh, SGD. Today's Saab Grimtech Defense uh, has sales of about 1.3 billion and an order intake of about 2 billion. Zar. We have 770 employees in South Africa and we provide solutions to over 30 countries. I should just mention of the 770 employees in South Africa, uh, currently only two of them are actually Swedish and the rest are South Africans. our infrastructure. So we're just down the road in Centurion. Uh, the bulk of the uh, staff is in fact based in Centurion, about 80% of them. And we also have facilities in Cape Town. Um, in Centurion, we have uh, an e electronic warfare facility for design, development, and manufacture of EW uh, components and systems. The second division that we have is our lead system integration division. The third is um, in-service and support. And then we have our command and control training and simulation division. And supported by this is our design and development facility and supply chain and production. In Cape Town, we have a naval EW manufacturing and support facility to um, the Navy. We have in the dockyard a ship support um, uh, center to support the Navy and some uh, production facilities as well. Uh, Saab Green Tech Defense, so what do we do? We um, uh, have products that are exported to over 30 countries. Our export, export represents uh, about 80% of our turnover currently. We have a local team that researches, develops, produces, exports, and maintains our uh, uh, systems worldwide in terms of products and technology. Uh, in terms of our systems, we were the first to actually offer a fully integrated uh, um, self-protection EW system, which is deployed on uh, a number of uh, uh, rotary, rotary wing and fixed wing platforms. Uh, in terms of uh, participation in uh, transformation, um, we are a level two triple B contributor with 25% black ownership. 
and we've won the um, South African Export Company DTI Award three times, in 2013, in 2014, and in 2016. Uh, we provide products to um, all domains, uh, to air, land, sea, and civil security domains. What do we do in each of these um, product areas that I've mentioned earlier on? So in terms of electronic warfare and electronic surveillance measures, we support products, we feed products in air, land, and the naval domains. In terms of avionics, we provide products for acquisition and communication systems, both on rotary wing and fixed wing products, um, rotary wing and fixed wing platforms, uh, some of our customers, our three key customers are in fact uh, British Aerospace, um, Leonardo Helicopters, Augusta Whitler, Westland, and, um, and uh, HAL, which is um, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Lead system integration, we provide products for the Army uh, and the Air Force as well as the Navy. Command and control, training and simulation, we provide products for the Army and the Air Force. So looking at some uh, in greater depth there, uh, EW systems and our avionic systems are mainly export oriented um, for countries both in the developed world and the less developed world. In the developed world, we are talking about countries like France and Germany, Switzerland, and in the less developed world, uh, countries like India and um, Malaysia. Our local systems uh, focused mainly on command and control, training and simulation, and lead system integration. Command and control mainly on the, um, focused on um, the Army and Air Force. We also have solutions in the civilian environment air traffic management in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, security solutions for the SAPS, for example, and we have support solutions for, to support these products. This is mainly based on local, regional, and, uh, and the regional market in South Africa and sub-Saharan Africa. In terms of our electronic warfare portfolio, we have um, a long history in electronic warfare. We provide systems for self-protection in terms of electronic surveillance measures and electronic intelligence. Uh, our products include an integrated defensive aid suite, which we call IDAS. Uh, we have um, a protection system for civilian aircraft called CAMPS. And we have um, systems for the defense of uh, land platforms uh, such as personnel carriers, for example. And on the naval platforms, we provide a naval uh, a, a laser warning system. We also provide systems for surface ships and submarines, uh, both for our local Navy as well as other um, platforms uh, uh, in overseas. We are the center of excellence for the design and development of antennas, RF and microwave components for Saab, and we do this worldwide uh, for uh, everywhere that Saab actually does uh, this sort of business. All our products are developed and produced in South Africa using South African engineers and technicians and South African uh, artisans for the production. In terms of avionics, we provide uh, communication systems, uh, we provide mission recorders, we provide data concentrators. Typical products include crash recorders, uh, data uh, cockpit vo voice recorders, health and uh, usage monitoring systems, uh, as well as lifetime monitoring systems for various different platforms. On the comm side, we have 100 platforms uh, in terms of fielded systems. On recorders, we have approximately 400 fielded systems, and on monitoring, about 600 fielded systems worldwide. Lead systems integration, this is, as I mentioned earlier on, focuses on the local market. 
we integrate both SAR products and um, non-SAR products. Uh, we provide integrated solutions for Army, uh, for Air Force, as well as civ civilian, um, uh, civilian customers as well. In terms of command and control, we provide a surveillance command and air picture display. So the air picture display, obviously, for the um, Air Force. And we provide ground command and control solutions. Our products mainly um, fielded in South Africa and uh, regional, in the regional area in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we do a fair amount of work on simulation in terms of soldier training and we provide um, simulation uh, facilities uh, to the um, Army and to the Air Force. So, looking at how we've managed to achieve this. So, Saab Green Tech Defense, as I mentioned, we won the DTI Exporter of the Year Award in 2013, 14, and 15. We believe our success is due to providing innovative and cost-effective products and services into the global market. I'll speak a little bit about our innovation program. So firstly to mention that we uh, spend about 10% of our revenues on self-funded R&D. And we have been doing this roughly since the acquisition by Saab, which as I've mentioned there was in 2005. This is further supplemented by customer-funded development. Customer-funded development typically runs in the order of 20 to 30 percent. So that would give you uh, um, investment into research and development to the tune of 30 to 40 percent. We also have an in-house program, which we call our Intrepid program. And we basically, we encourage uh, engineers to propose ideas for innovative products. We provide them with a certain amount of free time every year, um, and this free, free time is basically works along the principles of, uh, we ask them to put together a proposal at the beginning of the year. We have a council that will approve or disapprove of certain proposals, and once that proposal is approved, they have a certain amount of free time that they can utilize to develop their ideas until they come to the point where we can actually formally hand over to our R&D team and they can take that further into the higher technology read readiness levels and hopefully ultimately into, uh, into production. We also make use of the uh, DTI tax <coughs> rebate for R&D. And perhaps not all South African companies are aware of this and maybe not all utilize it to its full extent. But you can basically claim uh, one and a half times your cost of R&D as a cost, and that actually helps you to lower your tax burden to the state. We also make use of the DTI Manufacturing Competitiveness Announcement Program. This is one of many programs that the DTI actually has. Uh, this is a non-taxable grant that one can actually obtain, uh, and this is as a percentage of the manufacturing value add uh, in your production process. This is a sliding scale that you can actually benefit from in terms of uh, to, the, to the tune of between 10 and 25%, depending on the size of the company, and that is actually received as a cash grant. How do we leverage our supply chain into global markets? So there are two channels. The first is business to business, and we focus there mainly on OEMs. Uh, looking at our product portfolio, as I've indicated, you can see that does not go to the end user. We actually have to sell, uh, on sale that into platforms, and typically those are uh, aircraft manufacturers. And I've mentioned that we have strong relationships uh, with the like of BAE Systems, Airbus, um, HAL, and Leonardo. Uh, strong um, relationships with the OEMs. We also make use of the Saab global brand uh, to form strategic alliances with our global uh, uh, partners. We understand, of course, that not everybody has the luxury of that, uh, but there are ways that I believe 
that SME, SMMEs can actually get around that issue as well. Our focus is on products rather than projects. Uh, people who um, have worked long in the defense industry, as I have done, will know that uh, in the past, the government was very supportive of uh, project-based uh, uh, companies that focused on projects. Today, that is no more the case. Today, you actually have to have uh, products on the shelf, or if you don't have a product on the shelf, you have to be able to modify that product very quickly and go to market very quickly. So you need to have a product focus rather than a project focus. Quality products are absolutely important. You need the right quality and at the right price. And of course, uh, people hold you to your um, commitments for delivery uh, very, very strongly these days. And penalties are a reality, uh, whereas in the past, perhaps that was not uh, so much the case. There's also the issue of offset. In particular, if you are dealing with uh, government agencies, there is usually an offset requirement, uh, similarly to how South Africa, the South African uh, authorities have their offset requirements. Uh, our competitive advantage is actually based upon high performance products at competitive prices. Uh, no more is it actually possible to provide comp uh, high performance products and actually charge an arm and a leg for it. There is plenty of competition out there. You need to be competitive. Uh, we focus a great deal on quality, efficiency, and continuous improvement programs. We have a highly skilled workforce. Uh, approximately 50% of our staff are graduates, graduate engineers, and scientists, as well as the support functions, accountants, and the like that go with it. We have a large uh, installed base, as I've indicated previously, with multiple generations of previous uh, off-field systems. And this is basically your success that actually builds upon success. Once you have a fielded system, it becomes obsolete. You have to provide a midlife upgrade and a new system. You also have the advantage of providing the in-service support for those systems which life's, whose lifespan is typically 20 to 30 years. So once you're on a platform, you have a business case for a long time into the future. We meet global quality <coughs> standards, ISO 9001. Uh, we are part 145 um, uh, approved for uh, uh, part 145 approved maintenance organization for the European Aviation Safety um, Agency, EASA. Uh, we have a quality management system that is easily integrated into the customer's organization. Uh, customers, such as I mentioned previously, usually have their own quality management system and they want to ensure that you, as part of their supply chain, also are able to integrate into their quality management system. We have an integrated supply chain. Uh, we have a qualified and approved supplier base. Uh, we outsource about 30% of production to uh, uh, BEE SMMEs. We have an uh, enterprise supplier development program in-house, and we have about 15 small suppliers housed on our premises in SGD that we are actually busy growing. And of course, uh, the cherry on the top to actually leverage as much as possible our weak uh, our currency uh, in terms of uh, exports. Uh, that's a repetition. We, are, we believe we are a customer-focused foc organization. We provide world-class products in certain niche areas. Uh, we meet on-time delivery with the required quality standards. I've mentioned that we have uh, quality uh, continuous improvement programs. We have uh, the advantage of having a global marketing and sales organization. In Saab, we work with the concept of a market area, and there's a market area organization, and they help us to market our products worldwide. We don't have a huge marketing uh, sales force at SGD, but we make use of our glo global sales force. We believe it's very important to establish reference platforms and you normally do this 
by first providing to your local customer. Establish a, a reference platform with your uh, local customer and thereafter you export. To try and go directly to the global market, uh, the first question that you are asked always, have you supplied to your local customer? If you haven't supplied to your local customer, your overseas customer wants to know why, why not? Uh, we need to meet offset requirements. We find uh, in every country, um, I, I suppose it will come as no su surprise to you to know that in India there is a large offset requirement. We often have to do maintenance transfer of technology and we have to do uh, production transfer of technology. So this <laughs> also carries with it the challenge of how do you actually safeguard your IP while you do transfer of technology. But perhaps it'll come as a bit of a surprise to actually hear to, for you to hear that a company, first world company, country such as Switzerland also has offset <coughs> requirements. So offset is not a unique third world or develop, uh, developing country concept. It applies everywhere in the world. And of course, we uh, also take care of um, uh, non-project specific offset. The challenges that we actually see, we do find some uh, difficulties with export control turnaround time. Uh, the authorities uh, to get export um, permits, to get contracting permits, uh, is a bit of a timeless process and something that needs to be planned well in advance. We believe that there are insufficient uh, incentives for exporters, and it's perhaps something that government needs to look at. Uh, we have um, a bit of a challenge in terms of the ownership issue in the BE scorecard. As I've indicated earlier on, we are 75% foreign owned, and that has some, sort, some uh, unique challenges. In particular, multinationals are reluctant uh, to relin relinquish their majority shareholding. Uh, this has implications, for example, on your board in terms of veto rights, and it has the issue of the loss of control of IP. Uh, we strongly believe that there is a need to improve the cooperation with government, private sector, and institutions. This is the so-called triple helix uh, concept. Uh, we believe that that can be improved. The cooperation, for example, the research institutions such as the CSIR, universities, uh, the state-owned enterprises, and private enterprise, uh, we believe that that can be improved. Nip and dip, uh, that um, very important in the South African context. However, uh, South Green Tech Defense does not qualify as a company that can actually do dip in the country because we are not more than 50% uh, locally owned. Opportunities. Uh, we re really believe that partnerships within industry, institution, and governments uh, to uh, industrialize intellectual property and to create marketable products. That is really, we believe, the future. There is a lot of intellectual property generated in South Africa from various programs funded by AMSCO, uh, intellectual property generated by CSIR, intellectual property, intellectual property generated by the universities, in particular Stellenbosch, for example, and we believe that that can be capital, industrialized and capitalized upon. South Africa is non-aligned. We have the ability to export in certain countries where other uh, European countries, for example, may not be able to export. Uh, there are large markets in Africa, South America, India, and the Middle East that, can one, that one can look towards uh, in terms of export. And in conclusion, we believe that opportunities exist for South African companies beyond the local market. We strongly believe in that, as I've indicated. STD uh, does export of over 80% uh, of their revenue, so certainly there are opportunities there. Innovation, we believe, believe is a key factor for success. Products and services, must meet global quality standards and be the best in class for you to succeed. Customer relations are, relationships are extremely important, must be created and maintained. And maybe finally a word to SMMEs, uh, because SMMEs must 
wonder where do we actually fit in, into this uh, when competing with the likes of multinationals. So I believe they should create value-adding partnerships, both locally and with overseas companies, to launch their products and services into the global market. But I believe the future is bright, and there are many opportunities out there. Thank you.